Hello everyone, Yuki here from Yuki's Anime Review, and today I'm going to be reviewing Hakuoki Episode 5, Opposing Blade. So the Shinsengumi commander Kondo wants Ito to join the Shinsengumi. He's the one that helped to train Heisuke. So Heisuke sets off to Edo in search of Kondo-san and recruitment, while Kondo calls Ito-san to the Shinsengumi headquarters to persuade him to come and join them. While on patrol, Shizuru and the others look at the devastation that the Josu army created. Houses burned, families lost. Terrible. Guys! <laughs> Mommy's making a video here. So not much really happened at the beginning. The group is all back at the Shinsengumi and they start complaining about Soji's cooking, saying it is way too salty. And I'm really sorry about the noise, my dogs are fighting in the background and they will not stop. It's kind of funny because they all go and one by one rinse off this vegetable soup that Soji made really, really salty and Chizuru's left sitting there like, um, where are you all going? It's kind of rude. And then Soji gets up and he's like, yeah, well, I better go wash mine off too. So Ito-san shows up at the Shinsengumi and he is a real prick. He's like a guy, girl, stuck up the stick ass kind of guy, just like poo. But Kondo is totally infatuated with him. Ito-san says the foreigners must go from this land in order for Japan to survive. And I mean, that's true. You know, knowing what we know about history now, they probably should have got the hell out of there and yeah, Japan would be westernized and we'd have all these awesome samurai still running around. Sano is hunched over his desk trying to improve the medicine of life. Probably in order to take it. We shall see. With no word from her father, Chizuru is quite sad and she serves the Shinsengumi their sake and goes on with her daily, daily life but still worried about her father because over a year has passed now and she's had no word from him or his whereabouts. Upon exiting to take the dishes back to the kitchen, Ito-san follows Chizuru and gives her this rape stare, like that, pretty much, and she's like, oh god, who are you? Uh -huh. And he's about to go and do something when all of a sudden Soji comes and is like, and slashes a nearly missing him. And on the end of Soji's sword is a rose. And he said that these shouldn't grow here with men present. Yeah, kind of wonder what would have happened. The Shinsengumi decide that they need to move. Their forces are growing much too large and they need to get out of there. So they want to move to the Nishiwan Hong Temple. But it's already been taken over by the Choshu, so they're going to go over there and beat them up and take the temple from them. During this conversation, Ito decides to bash, bash Sanan San about his arm and how he's useless and no good to the Shinsengumi and trying to give up his title as commander. And it works. Everyone's really upset about this, but Sanan San just leaves, probably to go work on the medicine. And Kondo seems to have this love for Ito, like he can do no wrong. So we'll see how that works out. Standing outside, the men are talking together. And Soji says to Hijikata, why don't we just have Kondo taken back for a refund? <laughs> Only you could take people back for a refund. Later that night, Chizuru follows San and San to his room. Ooh. Because she wants to find out about the water of life. And so he invites her in and starts to tell her that her father actually created the water of life on order of the Bakafu. And he has been spending his time trying to make it better because when the soldiers take the medicine, they go absolutely crazy. Like when Chizuru first came and those men were after her and they were killed by those demon looking guys. They had taken the medicine. But San and San thinks that he's created one that won't turn him insane. So Chizuru pleads with him, don't take it, don't take it. Your life is worth more. You can do stuff. And he says to her, don't let me live as a corpse. Let me die as a man. And then he takes the water of life and throws it onto the floor. And of course, his hair starts to turn white and he gets all like crazy eyed. And he turns around and Chizuru's like, 
and he grabs her and he's choking her by the neck and she's pleading with him, son and son, son and son, help, don't do this. But yeah, he's lost his mind. And that's where the episode ends. On a cliffhanger. Yay! So this episode was pretty good. Um, Ido-san joined the group. Even though he is an ass and nobody likes him, it'll make for a very interesting storyline with him around, hopefully. Um, we didn't see anything about Kazuma or Shawnawe or even that princess girl, so they'll probably be coming in an episode or two and we'll find out more about them. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, the war seems to have died down. Now they're just looking for a place where they can call their home. Because I guess the men are basically sleeping in sausage piles. Bet you it's pretty gross and sweaty. Not really my style. Um, San San taking the medicine is probably the start of more characters taking the medicine. So hopefully the whole crazy thing gets out of their system because... I wouldn't want my cute hunky boyfriends, I mean the Shinsengumi members, to go crazy. Because as wild as that would be, it'd be a little much. So anyway, if you like this review, I'm Yuki with Yuki Anime Reviews, and I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time, whenever, day, night, just whenever I do it. So please subscribe to me and you won't be disappointed. Yuki out.